morning. Welcome back to Nono's Outdoor Kitchen. Today's video, I'm going to be taking you through my process of putting together my Neapolitan style pizza dough and we'll finish up with making a few pies. So the, uh, the formula, if you will, or the recipe that I use is 780 grams of flour. This is a uh, bread flour. It's got over a 12% protein. If I was able to get a double zero flour, that's what I would use. I already have in my mixing bowl 470 grams of water. So that is approximately going for a 60% hydration. I have a teaspoon of yeast and I have two teaspoons of sea salt. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and incorporate our yeast into the water. I'm going to give it a quick stir with a whisk. Now we're going to add in our flour. Okay. Well, I gotta say, it is a beautiful day here in sunny Florida. Gorgeous out. It's just under 70 degrees. We were in the low 50s at night. I'm gonna use a dough hook. And if you didn't have a stand mixer, you would be able to do this by hand. Uh, the pizza aiolis in Italy use a uh, wooden uh, kind of rectangular bowl to mix it up, but you could use whatever you had. So we're going to go ahead and mix this on speed number two, and my total mixing time is going to be about 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and set my timer while this is starting. Okay, we have a timer going. Now, I'm going to add in my two teaspoons of sea salt as soon as I see the water being absorbed by the flour. I haven't done this outside before, so it's interesting to see there's a little bit of a wind and you can see the flour starting to come out a little bit. All right, I'm gonna put in my sea salt. I'm gonna do it a little at a time. You could use Himalayan salt if you like. In my pizza, I like to use a, a, a really good quality sea salt. Well, that's it. Salt's in. Now, as I said, I'm going to let this mix 10 minutes. And then I'll take it out and I'll put some flour down on my surface. And I'll hand knead it anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. Okay. Well, yeah. Primo, he wanted to say hello to everybody. We're right at the 9 minute mark. So... What'd you do yesterday, Primo, huh? You had your teeth clean? The vet said he should take it easy. This morning, we're watching a little TV, having a little cappuccino, and he grabs a bone, and I had to chase him around the house. So, so much for taking it easy. I'm sure he's gonna chase some squirrels a little bit later when we're outside. Uh, outside the pool area, I should say. Anyway. All right, we're coming right up on the 10 minute mark. I'm gonna put some flour down. Now I did wash this, believe me. I'm, I've been cleaning this almost every day. I want it to stay nice, it's sitting outdoors. And there we go. I'm gonna stop this timer and reset it so we'll get a feel for how long it took me to hand mix. All right, there we go. Yeah, it comes right out nice and clean. It actually feels really good right now. But I'm still going to hand knead it just a little bit. All right, a flour in my hands. So I like to pull it away and then bring it back. I'm going to go ahead and pull my sleeves up just a little bit here. Now, I like to push forward and bring it back, push forward turn it, push it. 
So again, I like to use two hands and I'll continue doing this. It would help if I set my timer, right? <laughs> okay. Now, if your dough was a little wet, you'd add more flour. Mine feels really good, so I'm gonna move some of that excess flour out of the way and I'm gonna go ahead and I believe based on how this dough feels, I'm gonna go ahead and knead it for five more minutes. As I said earlier, as soon as I get it done, it's going back in the bowl just the way it is, no oil, and I'll put some saran wrap over the top and we'll let it sit for two hours. So that's the kneading process. Nothing special here. However you wanna do it, you wanna grab it, pull it, hold it with one hand, grab it, pull it. That's all perfectly acceptable. This is what I prefer and it's already coming together really nice so we'll give this five minutes of kneading we're at about a minute right now so again four more minutes and we'll be done kneading the dough okay we're right at the five minute mark and i feel like i'm in a good stage right here so that came together really nice Smells good, feels good. We're gonna stick it right in the bottom of our bowl. Again, I don't have any flour, no oil. And I'm gonna cover it up with some saran wrap. Taking a little bit of a risk here today outside. Saran wrap can be very tricky, let alone outside in the wind. Not too breezy today. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover it up with a dish towel, a dish cloth. So I said we're gonna let this rest for two hours. I'm not going to let it rest out here. I'll bring it inside the house into the kitchen. And after that, we'll divide it up. As I say, I'm going for four dough balls, approximately 325 grams each. Uh, so I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna take Primo for a, a walk. It's a gorgeous day out today. It's a beautiful day to be alive, to live a simple, healthy lifestyle. I feel so blessed, my friends. So I'm going to clean up, and Primo and I are going to have a little fun for two hours. We'll catch you back here in a little bit. Okay, well, we're just under the two hour mark, and I wanted to take a look at the dough. See how it's coming along? Hopefully, you can see that there. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll weigh it real quick. See where we're coming in at. Mm, it's a nice yeasty smell. Okay, we're at zero. So we're at 1258. That's going to put me right at about 325. Three fourteen, so that's what I'm going to be going for. Three ten, three fourteen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flour up my surface. I'm going to divide this into four. Okay, three dough balls have been made. I had a couple in at one twelve, one eight. Excuse me, three twelve, three eighteen. So. We're close enough. I wouldn't get hung up on everything being exact. So what I like to do is roll a little bit. I'm going to bring it all in and I'm going to pinch it. And I'm going to just give it a little spin like that. We'll turn it over and we'll make sure we have a nice shape. Okay, that's about all there is. Now, these containers I have, they work great, but it, sometimes it can be difficult to get the dough ball out. So I like to take a piece of saran wrap. That's option, optional I should say. And I'll place my dough ball in there. And I'll stack it up. And it comes with a lid. I'll stack them too high in my fridge. As I say, I opted for four dough balls. They're gonna sit out another two hours, then into the fridge. 
while they're resting I'll finish cleaning up um, now as I said at the beginning of the video excuse me probably Saturday is when I'm going to be cooking the pizzas one of them I'm going to put some sauteed broccoli rob on I'm growing some organic broccoli rob it's doing really well so we're eating a lot of broccoli rob um, so anyway one pizza will have some broccoli rob on it what I'll do probably Thursday I'll meet you all back here at the outdoor kitchen and I'll show you how I make my pizza sauce welcome back to the outdoor kitchen as promised we're making our tomato sauce for the pizza so today is Friday tomorrow I plan on cooking the pizza so I've got a 28 ounce can of organic tomatoes these are a San Marzano style and they're grown in California I've got one teaspoon of sea salt I have a teaspoon of black pepper freshly ground and now why does that smell good some fresh organic basil now I had to ride down to my son's house it's about a uh, my one mile round trip but there's no substituting fresh basil so if you can get your hands on some it's only gonna make your sauce that much better again with a Neapolitan style pizza you should be able to taste the different ingredients from the dough to the tomatoes the basil the mozzarella it's a very simple but what I'll say sophisticated pizza so again we'll get this basil in and then we're just going to hit it with the immersion blender and that's it now the reason why I'm doing this today is I want these flavors to have a chance to marry so we'll give it a uh, we'll give it about 24 hours here so again very carefully take your immersion blender and if there's some chunks left that's that's quite all right again this is a rustic pizza think about the history of a Neapolitan style pizza it's not a modern day pizza by any means so when this was first created most of this was probably done by hand and let's just see where we're at and I think that's it okay now I'm going to cover this with saran wrap and I'll I'm going to leave it out for about an hour then I'll put it into my fridge Welcome back. Here we are. It's Saturday, November 7th. My oven is almost up to temperature. In just a minute, we'll get the hot coals over to the left side. And I'll go ahead and make my first pizza. It's going to be a margarita. This is a little hot. I'm going to have to keep an eye on this temperature here to see if I need to put something down. So anyway, I'm excited. Oh, the heat coming off here. Okay, let's go and make our second pizza. Now the first one, again, due to the oven really getting to the proper temperature, I probably rushed a little bit. I did have some audio difficulty, if I'm being honest, so everything I did making that first pizza, there was no audio. Uh, we're at 670 on the deck temperature, so it's still nice and hot I have put some more wood onto my fire again we talked about the saran wrap it just helps when I'm using these types of containers it could be very difficult to get them out due to the shape and the dough ball 
by the time it's done rising it expands to almost the size so that just helps me get it out and keep that nice round shape as I was talking about earlier I think that's really important to making a good pizza so that's one of my tricks uh, I do have larger containers when I'm making a lot more pizza I'll use those and I don't have to use any saran wrap then so we'll go ahead and stretch this out once again and again I'm trying to be careful to stay away from that crust that there Again, I typically shoot for a 10 to 12 inch pizza. It depends on the size of the dough ball. Sometimes the temperature of the dough will play into how big of a pie I'm able to get out of this. So again, here's that uncooked sauce that we made the other day. Whoops, I don't want that on the pizza. Just a little bit more. Okay, so typically two spoonfuls is what I generally use and you know again this is you have to enjoy what you're doing with your pizza and don't get too serious about the shape of your pizza the only thing that matters is how good does it taste so um, again I typically two teaspoon uh, spoonfuls and uh, I, I try and keep some away from the middle uh, this one I'm not going to put any basil and the reason for that is this is going to be the pizza that I put the broccoli rob on so this morning my grandson Giovanni and my granddaughter Rachel they were out in my garden helping me harvest this and uh, well I had to tell you that's a great joy when you have your grandkids out there and Giovanni actually helped me saute this so he's learning how to cook he's gonna be a fine chef one day I can tell you that right now so again not too much right this type of pizza you shouldn't be overwhelmed with any one ingredient it's about a balance of flavors All right, so that's some uh, hot Italian sausage sautéed with garlic, a little sea salt, and uh, white wine to help it reduce on down. I'm just picking out some broccoli rob now. I didn't think that through, did I? I do have a napkin right here. Okay. Trying to keep my hands clean. Okay, so that's enough of the broccoli rob. <coughs> Put that right there. Now again, Pecorino Romano. I'm going to hit it with some Pecorino Romano. This is, as I said earlier, my favorite cheese. I could stop right here and I'd be very happy. Well, we are a very windy day today. What's my fire doing? Looking good. So I've got a flame going over the dome. We'll go ahead and let's see. We'll stop there. All right, there's my mutts. So, I'm thirsty. Okay. Let me go ahead and bring this over here just a little bit. And I put this underneath to give me a little bit of a, uh, an angle. It helps when I go to load the uh, pizza on. And again, I got to put a little bit extra flour today only because it's warm out and I don't want this to stick so I can shake some off that's the beauty of having 
the peel that has the slots in the bottom. So from here we're going to grab it and slide it right on. And once I get it on here I'll try and reshape it and get it to as close to a 12 inch pie as I can. And that's ideally what I'd like to have is a 12 inch pizza. That's all right. Now, let's put the moots on. Just move just a little bit. Okay. I like to place my cheese. That's that A-type personality, but you know, a real pizza aioli, it's very free form. So, get as creative as you like. I'm excited about this. I have not made a pizza with broccoli rob, let alone broccoli rob that I grew in my garden. This is organic. I am super excited about this pizza. All right. I'm going to hit it with some olive oil. Working our way right into the center. And I got to say, this fire is hot. My back is heating up. Now I have a little bit of the Pecorino Romano left. I'm just going to go ahead and use it up because it's out here. It's really hot. I do have two more pizzas that I'll be cooking later. But for now, I'll go ahead and use up as much as I can of this because the temperature that it is outside. <clears throat> okay. So let me switch sides here so you can see this. So that's what our pizza looks like. Hopefully you can see it. And let's get it in this right rear corner. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm not too hung up on if this pizza takes uh, 90 seconds or three minutes to cook. The only thing I'm worried about is that it tastes good, it looks good. Let me grab my small peel so I can turn it, and we'll take a look at the progress in just a minute. And I don't have much time, but that's what it's looking like. We'll go ahead and give it a turn. I'm back in again. So you can see nice fire. We have a flame heading up over the dome, and that's what the pizza is looking like. This is really hot, so we'll come back as I pull it out. Okay, there we go. That's the pizza. Nice bounce back. I've got two more to cook up, but first I'm gonna grab my cutter and I'm gonna give this a sample. I cannot wait. Well, as luck would have it, can't find my pizza cutter. I don't know what Nona did. This sounds like a setup. All right, let me get this out of the way. Okay. Not ideal. Let's see what our crust looks like. So, there you go. Hopefully that comes out okay. Now we'll go ahead and cut this up. I don't know where my pizza cutter is. And I don't know what's happening with Primo. Maybe he hears there's some food. Either that or someone's here and he's gonna bark. Okay, so not ideal. Well, I'm hungry, so I'm going in for a double. Okay. There's our slice. Nice looking crust. We have good bounce back here. All right. Neapolitan style pizza with broccoli rod.
Mm, it's hot. <laughs> My family wants to get after this pizza. Stacy, Nona, was just asking if they can come out and have some. I'm like, Shh, no. I don't know that I want to share this one. Okay. This might be my new favorite. Um, one of the pizzas that I really like is just some sauce, the Pecorino Romano, maybe a little basil. We'll save it for breakfast. We'll do an egg sunny side up with the yolk still soft and put that over a slice it's excellent mm. outstanding <laughs> you know I grew up on New York style pizza it ain't got nothing on this and especially when you're growing organic, organic broccoli rob and it's right on your pizza in an oven you built, doesn't get any better. All right, we'll see you next time back at Nono's Outdoor Kitchen. Thanks for watching. Got there, Giovanni. Broccoli Rob? Yes. What do you think? Explosive amazing. Oh wow. Well good job cooking it up, buddy. This is for the pizza later. Watching cooking with Giovanni.